Today, I wanna to teach you some common American idioms and expressions that's coming up. Hey everyone, my name is Wes from interactiveenglishvideos.com and this channel, it's all about helping you practice and improve your English skills. And today I, I want to help you build your vocabulary as well as improve your overall fluency because I'm gonna teach you some very common and useful American idioms and expressions that you might hear if you are talking to somebody who is from the United States, or maybe you can use some of these if you plan to visit the US. So believe me when I tell you that this lesson, it's gonna be a piece of cake. And that is actually the first idiom that I want to teach you. Many of you are, are probably familiar with this. I wanted to start with something a little easier and, and then it'll get a, a bit more challenging. But if we say that something is a piece of cake, it just means that something is very easy. So I told you that this lesson, it's going to be a piece of cake. I'm gonna teach you these idioms and expressions. And after I explain them and tell you how to use them, I think that you will have a better understanding. And like I said, it's just going to improve your overall fluency. So this lesson, it's a piece of cake. What's the sound of one hand clapping? Piece of cake. No, Bart, it's a 3,000 year old riddle with no answer. And every task you undertake becomes a piece of cake. What about a race based on merit? Rank each person individual. Mm hmm piece of cake. Then we have the phrase run late or run behind. And they, they both mean the same thing. It just means to be late for something. Now, I, I guess I could say that I use this phrase quite often and I would tell people that, that I'm running late. And I, I would use it often because yes, I am sometimes late for appointments or if I'm going to meet somebody, but I would call ahead and tell them, hey, you know, don't worry, I'm, I'm just running a little late. So in that case, I think it also implies that you are on your way to, to get somewhere. Or if you're talking about perhaps like a project and you say, you tell your boss, you know, I'm running a little behind. You're telling them that it, it may be late, but that you're working on it. So uh, again, this is a great expression. I think, uh, especially if you are somebody who, who tends to be late for things, you could just tell somebody, hey, you know, I'm running a little late, but I will be there. It's only four blocks, but they are so slow. I'm running late too. We're running late. Uh, we're always running late. We're running a little behind schedule. Hi, sorry I'm late. I've been running behind all morning. Then we have the expression to get the hang of something. And this just means to learn something that's not quite obvious. So for example, I think often you would use this when talking about some type of game or activity, you're trying to learn it and, and get a little bit better at it. And in that case, you could you could tell somebody, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get the hang of this. I'm starting to feel a little more comfortable. I understand it a little bit better and I'm starting to get the hang of it. One thing I would like to point out with this expression is that it is often going to end with that pronoun, it. So in that case, it's almost like you know what it is, you know the game or activity that somebody is talking about. And if you're trying to learn it a little bit better, then you're trying to get the hang of it or starting to get the hang of it. Or you could say he, he is getting the hang of it, but you know the activity, so it's often going to end with that pronoun, it. <laughs> Worry, you'll get the hang of it. <laughs> you're gonna get the hang of it. We'll help you. How's he doing? I haven't quite gotten the hang of it yet. Then we have the phrase, all set. <laughs> and this just means that, that you are ready and you are, every, everything is in order. So it's something that maybe you could ask to somebody if you wanna know if they're ready and you could say, hey, you know, all set. Or you could tell somebody if you want to say that you are organized, you're prepared and you are ready to go. And you'd say, you know, I'm, I'm all set. We're all set. We are ready, we're organized, we're prepared. You could also say, just to throw in another expression, good to go. Okay? It means the same thing. If somebody says, you know, I'm good to go, that means that they are ready, they're all set. Ready? Ready. All set. Okay, we're all set. Let her rip. Is it okay if I put out some candy that Pam brought back from Puerto Rico? Sure, thanks for asking. Pam, we're all set. Let me know what you got, Elgin. Good to go. Weapons good to go. You're good to go. Then we have the expression to sound like a broken record. 
And it really means, well, kind of exactly what it says, and that is that somebody is just repeating something again and again, especially when it's not really necessary. And you would say to another person like, oh, you know, you sound like a broken record. You just keep repeating the same thing again and again and again, especially when you don't want to hear it. Then you could use this expression and say that someone sounds like a broken record. I hope that I don't sound like a broken record because I do. I tend to repeat things again and again so, so that you have a better understanding of all of these idioms and expressions because I just... I just want you to get the hang of it. You know, I know I sound like a broken record. We are buddies. You're gonna murder me like you murdered my father? You people sound like a broken record. Babies, babies, babies. You sound like a broken record. Next is the phrase pitch in. And this just means that you start doing something as a group especially something that is helpful. So if you are working with a group of people, maybe a team, you want everyone to pitch in. You want everyone to do some work, the, something that's helpful for the group or the team. And in that case, you want everyone to pitch in. But it's used in, in that context that you might ask someone who may not be helping and you would tell them to pitch in or say you need to pitch in, but it is to, to do something that's helpful. Everyone here has a job. We all pitch in. Glad you could pitch in. He needs all the help you can get. By the way, if you need help with that, I'm more than happy to pitch in. Then we have the idiom to blow off some steam. And this just means to, to do something or to say something that helps you get rid of, of some energy often some some negative energy the if you're you're angry or upset you might try to perhaps you go for a run and you just want to blow off some steam you just want to want to get rid of that energy so you could use it when talking about a a an activity that you do something physical in order to blow off some steam or maybe it's something that you you say to someone perhaps you even might yell at someone and you're just, you're trying to blow off some steam. Time to think. No, let him go. He needs to blow off some steam. I've never seen him like this. Give the big lug a break. Even he needs to blow off some steam. I've been working so hard this semester. I really need to go crazy, you know? Blow off some steam. You still seem stressed. You want to blow off some steam? Then we have the expression, it's not rocket science. So this is a statement that somebody would, would say to another person if they want to express that something is not really difficult and it it's should be easy to understand. And you'd say, no, look, it's not rocket science. The, listen for this if you're watching a TV show or movie, because again, if somebody wants to say that, like, look, this is not difficult, they might tell somebody, you know, it's not rocket science. So I would tell you guys, you know, learning these idioms and expressions, it's not rocket science. I think it's a piece of cake. And if you just keep practicing a little bit each and every day, then you're really gonna get the hang of it. Caller, apologize, it's not rocket science. I mean, fixing your hair is not exactly rocket science. Because I don't wanna go by myself. Barb, Barb, it's not rocket science. You just tell your parents you're going to stay in my place afterwards. Then we have the expression to table something. And this just means to postpone a discussion until a later time. And often I think it might be used in business. Perhaps you're having a meeting with a group of people and, and you have a list of items that you're going to go through. But you want to discuss one of them at a later time. You might say, you know, let's let's table this item for right now and then we will discuss it later. So you could table some item if it's on an agenda or maybe you could just table some discussion and you will talk about it at a later time to table something. Suppose that we table this discussion until, let's say, the second nope is gone. Uh, I, I think what the Dane is trying to say is... Uh... There'll be time to talk about that. But we can table that for a later date. What is your job exactly besides making balloon animals? Protecting your reality. Okay, guys, can we, can we table this discussion right now? The fact is, is that we have this stuff. Next is the idiom to jump on the bandwagon. And this just means to start 
supporting something or to even start doing something because it's trendy or fashionable. Often, I, I think I would use this idiom uh, when talking about sports, that if there is a sport team that just suddenly started winning and then everybody, they, they like this team all of a sudden, they're, they're a huge fan, then you could say, look, you know, uh, he, he just jumped on the bandwagon. He only likes the team because everybody else does. He's supporting this team. He jumped on the bandwagon. Of course, this has happened to me if I'm living somewhere and then that, that city has a sports team, they become really great, yeah. I jump on the bandwagon. Everything's eco-friendly this, eco-friendly that. I just haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet. Yeah. Millions of people got on the anti-Denmark bandwagon. Show me some kind of kindness by not jumping on the Let's Get Meg family bandwagon. Let's stick with sports for right now because the next expression is to sit in the nosebleed, or you could say to sit in the nosebleed section. And what this refers to is that you are sitting in seats that are that are very high up at the, the very top of a stadium, and you're very far away from all of the action. <laughs> because you're so high up there, you are sitting in the nosebleed section. And the reason why we use this is because if you are at a very high altitude, then maybe your nose would start to bleed because of the altitude. So if you're high up there in the stadium, then you could say, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in the nosebleed section. When I jump on the bandwagon and I want to go see a, a sports team play, typically I don't have a ton of money to spend, so I have to find the cheapest tickets, which are usually high up there in the stadium, and I would sit in the nosebleed section. Can you take me to a concert with my new friend, Harper? Sure, why not? It'll be nosebleed or obstructed view seat. Uh, but you know what? I have a friend. Uh, he's got a couple of seats. If, uh, if you don't mind the nosebleed section, they're yours. No, we don't care. We just want to go. Then we have the idiom to fall through the cracks. And this just means to overlook something. So if you are perhaps doing some project, you don't want to overlook the details. You don't want anything to fall through the cracks. I need you to be sure that things don't fall through the cracks. Basically, I need you to be more like Dean here. You do it every week and you forgot. Things are falling through the cracks. I'm pretty sure you've worn that sweater four days in a row. <sighs> this whole lot. Single parent thing. Everything is just falling through the cracks. So what did I tell you? Those idioms and expressions, piece of cake, all right? It, it's not rocket science. And I'm sorry, I know that I sound like a broken record because I keep repeating these, these same idioms and expressions over and over again. I hope you're not upset with me, but if you are a little upset and you think you need to blow off some steam, then I would suggest that you check out another video lesson. I hope that you enjoy these lessons and that you just, you jump on the interactive English bandwagon. Jump on the interactive English bandwagon and <laughs> because, okay, I, I can't think of any more. I just trying to review as much as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learn some new idioms and expressions and I will see you next time.